Hey guys, Brickman117, welcome back to the channel and my review of the Mega Constructs Halo Infinite Set GNB27 Defense Point Showdown. This is a 782 piece set listed as a Pro Builder 10 Plus set. The main build consists of a banished anti aircraft gun and you also get a UNSC Mongoose along in the build as well. It is a two in one build. The alternative build in this set are two very interesting looking spaceships. Figures wise, you get the Master Chief, a Brute called Hyperius, a Grunt Assault and a UNSC Marine. Weapons wise, you get one plasma pistol, an assault rifle, a what we now know is called a shock rifle, a gravity hammer and a few accessories as well. You get a communications backpack for the Marine and a jump pack for the Brute. When the pre-release images for this set were first released by Mega Constructs a while back, I did a thoughts video on that and I stated in that video that I was unsure about how I felt about this set. A lot of that came from we hadn't actually seen this in a trailer or anything yet. The Halo Infinite trailer, gameplay trailer, hadn't yet been released. So we didn't actually know how well it resembled the in-game gun. Now that we've seen that trailer, I think we can all agree they have done a good job of capturing that gun, albeit on a much smaller scale. So now that I've built this set and I have it in front of me, do I feel any different? I'll be honest and say not really. I just think this set doesn't really strike a chord with me in regards to what I like about sets. There's nothing particularly wrong with it. It's just not something that overly appeals to me. But that's not to say that this set doesn't have a lot going for it. So let's take a look. In regards to what you can do with this set, you have full 360 degree rotation of the actual main gun. You can also elevate it relatively high up and you can also elevate it slightly down if. No, you can't elevate it down. You also have two projectile launchers at the front here, which will fire off their standard projectiles to never be found again. You've also got two spares just stored underneath here so you can reload relatively easily. Now the legs, as you lift this up, they actually come in like this. Now this is quite handy for if you wanted to actually display this gun on different levels. You could do this, but then you're limited to what you can do with this. Something like that is feasible, but as you go to rotate it, it would put the gun on a slightly funny angle. So kind of see what I think they were going for there, but how effective it is, is questionable. Now on the end of each leg, you've got these canisters here, fuel cells or something. And this is a play feature that you can just do that. That one didn't pop off that well. There we go, that's a bit better. Which is quite a good little feature. Obviously we could see that this was going to happen from the images they released pre-release, but it actually works a bit better than I thought it would. So that's actually quite nice, that little feature there. Other than that, this set doesn't actually do a lot. There's not much more else you can do with it. I do think it looks okay on display. I certainly don't dislike it. It's just, it's not something that, as I said earlier, really appeals to me. I think possibly its size doesn't do it any favours either. If we bring in the Chief that comes with this set, as you can see, it does tower above the Chief, but in that trailer, we could see that he actually goes inside one of these guns. So they are absolutely ginormous, but I can appreciate there's no way Mega could have produced one on that scale. So I really do think they've done the best they, they could in terms of cost and piece count to accurately create this set at an affordable price. Moving on to the mongoose that comes with this build. It's the same mongoose in, as in the recon getaway. So it's an identical mongoose, which is fine because as I said in that review, I really like these mongoose. They're very handy to have and having a few of them just makes display and dioramas even better. An area where I think this set does win is the figures it comes with. The grunt is absolutely fantastic. These new lines of grunts, I know some people don't like them, but I really do believe this is the best version of the grunt they have created. As for the Marine, this Marine's fantastic. Now, this is the first time I've seen this Marine. This is a female Marine. If we just take the helmet off there, you can see it's a new Marine. I haven't reviewed this one yet. And she also comes with, there's a grenade that can be attached to her thigh. And then there's also a few water canteens on the other side. And then you've got the backpack radio set for her to carry around as well. Now, 
generally i really like this marine the facial detail is very good and she's actually got black hair with a very small ponytail the one downside i've noticed with this female marine is because she's got this ponytail here you can't elevate the head upwards because the ponytail actually catches on the backside of the body armor so she can only look down or left to right if you try and tilt her head up that's that's as far as it will go she can't look up it it hits back here and the other downside to this ponytail is when you put the helmet on you can't quite get it all the way down so when you look at her directly from the front the visor can't actually come down to cover her eyes because the back of the helmet hits the ponytail but in all honesty doesn't bother me in the slightest I'd, I'd rather have that and have a female marine with hair than have another bald male marine so i think that's a small compromise to pay for a, a different marine figure so yeah very happy with the female marine and then the figure that everybody's been talking about for this set is this guy hyperius now the detail on this guy is absolutely incredible he is a really really well detailed figure i would say this is easily Halo Heroes quality for sure. We'll take a closer look at these figures in just a minute. But before we do that, I just want to say a quick few words about the build process. Now, as much as I said I'm not a huge fan of the end result of what this looks like, the build process was surprisingly satisfying, especially this section up here. You can see with the studio lights on it, these translucent red blocks in here have a really nice effect to make it look like that gun does charge up and then you've got where the projectiles would come out of the end here. And the actual design, there's quite a lot going on here. here. It's a very solid build. All sorts of unusual building techniques as usual with uh, Mega Constructs, side building, upside down building, everything. So it very it is very mixed. These parts here are a bit repetitive because you do make three of those, but this bit's all relatively unique and quite an interesting build as well. Again, very solid. So overall satisfaction of the build, I did enjoy building it. It was it was really fun to build and there's, I can't knock that at all. It went together nicely. I had no missing parts. So in that respect, I do like it. And it's not that I don't like it. I don't know. I just can't quite put my finger on it that what it is about... Um, not my dissatisfaction, but it's just not a set that I really feel I want to scream and shout about. Taking a look at the figures, we'll start off with the Grunt Assault. Now, as I said earlier, I really like this style of Grunt. They're definitely fiddly to put together with their body armour and their environment suits, but thankfully most of the time they come built now, so I didn't have to do anything with this one. And it does look really nice, definitely alongside the Grunt that you get from the recon getaway set i just really like these guys i want a whole army of these just to put into dioramas so again very pleased with this grunt in this set paint application wise the red on the top of his helmet is paint application and you've got very very fine detailing for his eye there in the the light blue that is customary for these grunts and then a small amount of blue around his, well, I assume his breathing apparatus on the front there. So that's about it. These two pieces, if you didn't already know, come separately. You pop these on yourself. That was about the only bit I had to build. And pretty much all round, a pleasing figure. So I'll take as many grunts as I can get my hands on, because as I say, I do think they're great little figures. Moving on to the Marine, as I said before, the main issue is this with the helmet. You can just see the eyes poking out under there, but if I turn it around, you can see you can't really, you can't tilt the head back anymore. The hair is just touching the back of the body armor there. If you took the body armor off, no problem. So for certain scenarios, if you want to display them without the body armor on, you'd have no problems at all. But you've still got full range of motion everywhere else, apart from the fact, as I say, you can't put that helmet down. But if we just pop the helmet off, you take a look at her without that helmet on, what a fantastic face mold that is. It's absolutely brilliant. So realistic so lifelike so yeah as i say a very small compromise to make and as you can see there you've got the grenade there on her left thigh you've got some what little ammunition rounds on the front of it not painted and on this side you can pop the two what look like drinks canisters on the side there these come off and so does that grenade come off you put those on yourself 
you also build the radio, you put the aerial on top, and then you put that on her back afterwards too. Shoulder pads wise, I think this is different shoulder pads from the other two sets that I've reviewed. So again, in terms of versatility with your Marines, it just gives you even more scope to mix and match the armor, the heads and everything like that. And obviously with this one, you've got the female torso as opposed to the male. You've also got nice paint application on the knees here and the feet that you're able to pivot in and out again. So definitely pleased to have yet another Marine to add to the variety that we've already got. And then next up, we've got the Chief. What would a Halo Infinite set be without a Chief? So the good thing about this one is yet again, it's a it's a different Chief, it's the same Chief, but they keep doing different things to it. So you don't have the exact identical Chief. Now I knew on this one when we'd seen the pre-release images that he came with dust and dirt on his feet, which I thought was a really good idea and a nice touch for making him look like you can use the same figure, but if you're doing dioramas or stop motions, he can go from clean chief to dustied up chief if he was out in a desert area, which I think is great. A lot of people are gonna appreciate that. What I didn't realize is that this dust effect comes all the way up the thigh armor, it's over the shoulder pads, the arms, and it's also across his chest armor and his helmet, which is quite hard to see on the camera, I'd imagine, but it is everywhere. You can see it down the side of his back armor there as well, and then all down the back of his boots too. So yeah, I know people have said, a number of people said, oh, there's a chief with every set, whereas uh, as long as they're different, I'm happy. I really, really like this mold of the chief. So at least they've chosen to do it with a really appealing style of chief. I do really like this one. One disappointment here was the paint's gone all a bit funny on his helmet. Um, this is the first one I've had with what I would say is sloppy paintwork on the visor, hopefully just a one-off. All the other ones I've had have been pretty good. It does have a slight surround of black here, but I think that's what's possibly happened. The black wasn't continued along the bottom of the visor. The silver dots for his lights aren't too bad. And he does have a bit of black for the vents down here, but again, I think it's gone a bit sloppy. So a little bit unfortunate there because I do like this, this version of the Chief with dust all over his armor. And finally, the main figure of the set, Hyperius. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this guy is just such high quality, easily worthy of a Halo Heroes line. He has paint application everywhere on the boots here, on this front, groin piece. He's got his body armor, has got red and silver in it. You've got the lock helmet on his shoulder, or what we assume is Locke's helmet here, which again has got two different paint applications. Moving on to his helmet, he's got paint application along the bottom, and then obviously with his weapon as well, you've got various different paint applications for the main handle of the hammer. And then obviously a paint application here with a small detail of silver paint application there. Moving around to the back of the figure, he's got orange hair, which I thought was interesting, which I'm assuming is hair. I don't know whether it's hair or it's just some sort of helmet cape to protect the back of his neck. I'm really not sure. Comes with a jet pack as well, which or jump pack, which has got no paint on it. But something that is interesting with this figure, now I don't know if this is intentional or not, but this thigh armor here is a different color to the thigh armor here. This here is the same color as this up here, whereas on the other side, it's much lighter. As I say, it could be intentional. They've done a lot of strange things with the brutes in this line so far, so I wouldn't be surprised at all if that was intentional. So we'll take a quick look then without his helmet on. There we go. I think that's pretty much the same head mold as all the other brutes that we've seen in the infinite line so far but like i say as far as i'm concerned this figure is absolutely fantastic no complaints here whatsoever definitely one to hold on for and i've got to be honest i would buy this set just for this figure he really is that impressive as i'm sure you'll agree as you can see here like with some of the other sets you get quite a lot of pieces left over. Now, a lot of these pieces are because they're needed for the alternative build. So you do get a few extras thrown in, but if you're not interested in the alternate build, you really do get a chance to build up your collection of spare pieces, which I think is absolutely brilliant because you get the sets that you paid for, plus you get all these pieces to use for your own 
personal building collection which for someone like me that likes to build their own sets is absolutely fantastic it's essentially free pieces on top of the set you've already paid for so to summarize my thoughts on this set i'd have to say not my favorite set so far but by no means a bad set but 100 percent worth it for the figures if nothing else don't forget to let me know your thoughts on this set in the comments section below. And if you enjoyed the video and you're not subscribed to the channel, please consider hitting that subscribe button. In the meantime, I'll get working on my next review, the Skiff Intercept. And until then, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.